Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition Solo Runs. Last time we entered the Whispering Depths, killed two Etacaps with relative ease, and now we have two Face Spiders ahead of us. So, where we are right now, we cannot be seen, and we have a fire here, which is going to help us take out these spider webs if they're ever stood on them, because it means they will fall to the ground and take falling damage. So let's light our weapon here. Excuse me. <clears throat> Go into turn-based mode. And we're not stealthing anymore, which is a pain. Let's leave turn-based mode. Stealth. Go back into turn-based mode. And now we are hiding when we make our attack, which is what we wanted. We remain hidden, which is wonderful. They get to take a turn. Do they see us? They do not. We are no longer stealthed. If we can get a line of sight on them, we can get a second attack in before initiative is rolled. And now, let's get Hunter's Mark going. This should give away our position, which we kind of want now because we don't want them leaving and going off and healing. Do we want that? Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is. And they both go first, of course. Excellent miss. Go... Stand next to your friend. Oh, or don't stand next to your friend, sure. Uh, we're going to bonus action dip in here. If we can get... And this, the whole reason we have this fire here is we can now stand there. And while we could attack them at a 64% chance, what we can do instead is attack the spider web at a 100% chance... And that spider having 5 HP will almost certainly take 5 or more damage on their way down. So we have this guy remaining. We have enough movement. No, we do not have enough movement to get... Oh, we're like 6 inches off, which is a shame. Alright, we don't have enough movement to get to there. We've spent our action and our bonus action, so it's going to be an end turn. But now... 1v1, this should go a bit easier. We still have flaming arrows. But would I rather attack him for 1d8 plus 4 plus 1d4? Or the webs, where I think they probably just take 1d6 or maybe 2d6 fall damage? I'm inclined to, actually, Hunter's Mark. And then this becomes... 1d4 plus 4 plus 1d4 plus 1d6. And of course we miss. Please don't do 13 damage to me this turn. Let's get out of the poison. Face our enemy. Alright. We are poisoned, but they missed. But the poison condition is not staying on us, which is fine by me. So, 80% chance once again. 11 plus 3. Now, I'm going to take the opportunity to make some space between it and I. And a little... Potion of healing never went amiss. Alright. There goes our concentration. We also no longer have fire on our bow. But we do have alchemist's fire. If we throw that here, I'm hoping the splash damage will take out the web.
It did not, which seems ridiculous given how much other stuff is burning right now. Uh, for a bonus action, it's going to have to be the Potion of Greater Healing. That was a massive Potion of Greater Healing. 17. They miss. Nine damage there is great. I'm actually going to move back up here towards our torch because if we can, if they stay there, we can probably get them to take the remaining five damage if we can take out that web this next turn. And so we do have a dipped weapon. 100% chance to do that. And they are down. Okay. Relatively painless. Let's take our torch back. And is there going to be any loot on face spiders? I'm going to guess unlikely. The loot is kind of the backpacks and everything else that we find along the way. How much XP did we get for that? It does not tell us. Well, I hope it was lots. Nothing there. I think the Matriarch has some armor inside of them later on. Uh, where are we at? 1083. The Eternal Quest to level 4. Nothing there either. So with two spell slots and almost all of our health and a spell slot remaining, I think we can afford to poke around some more in here. I think there is one more isolated spider behind this web wall. Oh, that looks real uncomfortable. Is there a no spider around here? I thought there was one that lived right here. Perhaps not. But hey, oh, it's so good. You love to see it. Evidently, the people that came here before us were better prepared than us. Uh, let's head up here. See what other trinkets and baubles we can find along the way. And the question becomes, do we think we can actually succeed in fighting the other creatures that are further down in that mess over there? Are we sneaking? We are. We are hiding and heavily obscured. Because the last thing I want to do is start this fight before I want to. All right, let's see what we can do with another spider. If we summon that far enough away from us. What I'm hoping we might be able to do is there's all these eggs over here. And eggs are bad because the matriarch can use some kind of a skill to cause all of those eggs to become babies. And whilst they don't do heaps and heaps of damage or anything, in the action economy, six extra small attacks against you is awful. So it's going to take us a while. But with our spider, we can start messing these eggs up. Which will mean for every one of these that we can take out now, that's one fewer baby face spiders that we have to deal with later. So whilst this is a little tedious, I am all for this strategy. Why? Well, normally I would think about jump cutting, but just over there is the matriarch, and the matriarch does kind of pan over in this direction. 
And so what I want to avoid is being seen. So I'm just going to let you guys live the tension with me. Of course, the 1d4 poison from this spider's bite is completely worthless against creatures that deal and are immune to poison. But the actual mechanical biting is always good for 1 HP damage. Okay, we stood on the wrong side of that too much. And there are a whole heap of baby spiders. So we kind of expected this to happen. It's a good thing they didn't get over here as well, because that would be twice as many baby spiders. Uh, but the real temptation now is to just have Bo flee. Because amongst all this stuff, there is not much we can be doing. Can we? Let's just do this the most amusing way I can imagine. Everyone, say hello. Oh. <laughs> I thought we'd get, at least get to see what was at the bottom of there, but if you jump down that hole, you might find yourself in the Underdark, which is always a pleasant place to be. So... With all of those babies, I do not feel confident in my abilities to deal with this fight any longer. If the matriarch is up on one of these things, you can burn them and make them fall and they'll take a reasonable amount of damage. But I think I'm going to add this to the list of combats I am not confident in completing quite yet. At least until we get to level 4, we will have higher decks, we will have higher wisdom... We will generally be better prepared for such an encounter. So I'm going to climb back up to the blacksmiths. And from the relative safety of the blacksmiths, we're going to come out of the main entrance here. Oh, trap disarm tool. I'll take that. Uh, come out here. And then still in the village, there are half a dozen goblins or so. And I think we can deal with them. There's this one on their own. This should be our easiest target. With 9 HP. I think... We can isolate them. And now that they are hunters marked and surprised... That went exactly as I expected it to. So, as ever, that's 10 more XP. The three ogres in here, I am not going to mess with right now. But down here, I think there's two goblins down on the gate and two or three on patrol here. I think we can deal with them. Huh. A game for surface children. Oh, the um, noughts and crosses. An interesting observation. Not noughts and crosses, hopscotch. Doy. Um, an interesting observation from a drow. All right, I'm going to take this ladder up to the roof because that roof is going to give us a huge amount of benefit against the foes that are on the other side of this rooftop. We, of course, are still maintaining uh, not quite concentration, but our Hunter's Mark, we are maintaining the spell. They are surprised, and it's just them. Although there's red marks on the map for others, it is just this creature for now, which is great. They will not take a turn because they are surprised, which leaves us to attack again. And that's 25 XP, which is great. And their corpse is going to do a little break dance before settling down. 
Now, there's a couple more over here somewhere. You are right up against that wall. Is there one patrolling? There is one patrolling. I'm probably going to want to get over this side of the roof. And then Hunter's Mark. We could attack straight down there, but I'm going to go for this one first. And we're so far away, they don't even notice us. An excellent snipe. Now, two more below. This one has seven HP, which we might be able to do in a single shot. But they are awkwardly placed directly beneath us. Whereas this other one... Oh, hiding there in the bushes. That's fine by me. Let's reapply Hunter's Mark. Excuse me. Reapply Hunter's Mark there. And... Nine is good. It's not perfect, but I'll take it. Unfortunately, we can't climb back over this piece of roof. So we're just going to maintain our position. They're going to come indoors, then perhaps through this door. Yep. Oh. I was not expecting to be shot from there, if I'm very honest. But honestly, that's fine, because we can attack these. And then, if we just move this way slightly... They shouldn't be able to attack us from where they are. We should have hunters marked them before we walked across, I concede. So now they're going to try and get us from about here, I guess. Or not at all, which is great. And from here, hunter's mark. And with 7 HP, this should be a given. Especially when you crit. Uh, please don't be locked on this screen forever. Okay, good. Uh, I want to see how much we crit for. 17 piercing damage. Not bad. See, it damages the D8 into 2D8, plus 1 for the weapon, plus 3 for the dexterity modifier, plus 1D6 character weapon damage boost. But that should be... 2d6 because you double all of the dice rolls on a crit and Hunter's Mark counts as a dice roll so that's a bit of a pain regardless we can hop on down here yeah of course alright stand up we will short rest for 9 HP and then as ever loot the spoils of our victory that's nice. That's really nice. 2d6 acid damage. Not sure if any of these contain any loot in particular, but I'm not going to stop and go through every single one. It's a little tedious. Check these guys for gold and such. I don't need more bows. I could take every single weapon on every occasion, but it gets to be a little tedious. Poison, though, is lovely. There's a brawler. Broken loot. Not something I need. And then we've got at least one guy here. I thought it was normally two, but one of them might have climbed up the hill. But what we can do then is give them a wonderful surprise. We could reapply Hunter's Mark, but that will give them attention. And so what I'd rather do is attack them first try and surprise them, and then if we get to go first on the surprise round, then use Hunter's Mark. I love it when a plan comes together. Not that we can hit and do less than three damage. But hey, 16's pretty good going. So... Now we have 
just the ogres up there, which, as I've said, I'm not going to concern myself with right now. So, our journey to... Oh, that's carry weight. I thought it was experience, and I got really excited. Our journey to level 4 is now on the 888 mark. So, we're getting there. I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. You can sleep when you're dead. All right, well, we've got the swamp further to the south, the goblin village over to the west, which is going to be interesting because we are a drow, so that will work to our favour. But I think next might be a particular tiefling up to the north, but we'll see when we get there. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them below. And other than that, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.